Hello, and a good evening. Hello. To you. Um, if it is evening, good evening. If it's morning, good morning. If it's good afternoon, good afternoon. How are you all? I you hope you're all very well, um, and welcome to an evening with me and Caroline. Me. <laughs> so, He's Richard, I'm Caroline, obviously. I think you know that by now. I think they may know that yeah. by now. So tonight will just be uh, maybe an hour long, um, hopefully no more than that. If it's gone, more, gone on for more than an hour, just let us know in the chat and we'll stop. <laughs> and we'll, we'll have music on the organ, live music, and we'll have question and answers. Feel free to um, write anything you like in the chat, any questions you like in the chat, and we'll... Um, you know, we are keeping an eye on the chat so we can um, respond to those I'll do my best live. to keep an eye on the chat. Yeah. It does move quite quickly. So what I thought we'd do is we'll just kick things off with, um, with an organ piece. Um, a... Hooray! <laughs> this is what you um, all subscribe for anyway, isn't it? Um, so we'll have a little bit of Dubois, um, his, um, his Toccata in G, which I think you all know. And then we'll have another piece later on, followed by... Another piece. Okay, so let's go into the first piece, the Dubois Toccata. Get yourselves comfortable, get yourselves a drink, and get involved. That's the important thing, get involved. So I'll just switch over to the organ and um, we'll get cracking.
just take the um, very long trek that it is from the organ back into the studio here. Hope that was all right for you. I was just thinking as you played that, sorry to interrupt, yeah. we haven't named your organ. You've got Little Bertha, the chamber organ, Bobby Nala. We haven't named that organ. It's the elephant in the room. I haven't named the organ. The organ. Doesn't it's central to everything that we do and it sits there and it hasn't got a name. Well, what are we going to call it then? I don't know. I'll have to this. put it to the people. Ah, I don't know. <laughs> what do you think we should call that organ? <laughs> <laughs> well, okay. So um, let, let's open that to a little, um, maybe a beauty and sound competition. <laughs> best name wins best name sticks <laughs> okay yeah we do my, I do tend to name my organs chamber organ is called Little Bertha there was a little bit of a story behind that there was a uh, an infamous stop at on the organ of Winchester Cathedral it's a 32 foot reed and it's a your favourite contrabombard and it puts the um, 32 foot reed on this organ to shame it's excessively loud it needs to be in that cathedral because it's the cathedral is massive um, and the, the 32 foot reed has got the nickname um, Big Bertha. Big Bertha, as after the American tank, you know. Um, and so I built an organ, as you've seen on my channel already, and named it Little Bertha. First suggestion then, <laughs> Arthur. Hester. Arthur. P Pipey McPipeface. <laughs> ah, yes, okay. We could have that. It's a little bit of a, a, little bit of a uh, mouthful though, isn't it? Gerda's car is called Carrot. Let's not call it carrot. <laughs> That's how cars call carrot. Is it ginger? Is that why it's carrot? <laughs> Thank you very much, Paul. Shit That's very kind. Should be called Big Buddha. <laughs> okay. Well, we'll 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 take the we'll have a look at these um, offline, as it were, and then we'll very um, good. <laughs> we'll then see what which one's Big best. Buddha. Great. So I think we should talk about what has been on the channel recently. Mm. Oh, hello, Nala. Nala's been on the channel recently. <laughs> first, um, here yes, here, oh, here comes on those keys, the first Nala. sign of chaos from <laughs> Nala. Yay. We were, I think in the thumbnail, you were promised cats and chat. So here we are with Here's... Nala's. And she's going to sit on my papers so I can't see what's coming next. Well done, Nala. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so knows. let's just have a quick talk about what's been on the channel. Because yeah. it has been busy mm, recently. Last weekend was was a bumper weekend for us, wasn't it? It was a bit of a a, a bit of a weekend and a half. It was. Um, it was full on, but it was a lot of fun. A lot of fun. So the weekend started with the twelve hour organ marathon. In here, didn't leave the room for twelve hours. Neither did Caroline. Actually, Caroline pretty much pretty much sat where we are right now. I made it to the toaster to do some crumpets. Yes, which uh, I, I you may have seen me eating, but they went cold eventually. <laughs> <laughs> um, so we must try harder next time, or I must eat them faster. One of the two. Um, so the twelve hour, the twelve hour. Let's just talk about the twelve hour. Uh, how we got on with that um, little um, little feat. Mm. So yes. it was. I wanted to do that because um, we had just on the channel made a little bit of a breakthrough. I managed to. I was having issues with YouTube, which I've uh, spoken about before, um, sort of behind the scenes, and I finally managed to get hold of someone. Um, at YouTube and very friendly chap and we were able to sort out some issues which is actually actually why some of the videos have disappeared but some of you noticed but they'll come, they'll come back over time in, in, in better ways um, so to finally have these issues resolved it was such a relief mm. such a relief so I just, what better way to celebrate than always, playing for 12 hours straight I always <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> One of Richard's taglines is, we don't do things by halves. He's always saying that to me. We don't do things by halves, you know. Well, we did do things by halves because the next time we'll do 24 hours. Oh, gosh. So, so half, that's half, isn't it? So, oh. Anyway, so I, I always thought I wanted to do a, um, a marathon. You know, it's not the first time I've done an organ marathon before. Mm. It's the first time that I've played a Habitsburg organ for 12 hours non-stop. You did one, didn't you, at the parish church, your previous parish church it, job my, to raise money for the church roof? Which, yes, which went well, uh, yes. Um, actually didn't have anywhere near as many people watching or involved. <laughs> um, uh, so it's not the first time I've done it, but I must admit the, the, the one in the church was so much more tiring. It was so much, it was such, it was, it was relatively easy playing here. It was just like a long virtual church. You don't have a toaster <laughs> next door and crumpets um, handy. No, so it was just a bit of a celebration, really, and it was a way to, it was a way to, hopefully, uh, bring new people onto the channel, so we could uh, sort of spread the word, open our arms to a wider community, and obviously wanted just wanted just to raise a little bit of money for the nursery. Mm, um, thank you all so much so, for your donations. Actually, ships of ours wondered how much we we raised. Yes, well, um, enough for um, me to buy a new lens. Mm. Um, the lens isn't here yet, so you're not seeing me through the lens yet, but. I bought a new lens um, for a 
for the camera. It's a wide angle lens. I really can't wait to try that out. And the rest of the money will go towards um, baby automobiles, There's prams and whatever else we need to buy, car seats, seats yeah. all that sort of stuff. So really, really, yeah. really, both really grateful Thank for you your so donations. Thank you so much. Yeah, it's really kind. It, we does go, it does go a very long way indeed. It does. Um, so we did it. We did 12 hours. And um, do you know what? I didn't actually, the only thing where I uh, um, sort of suffered as a consequence was just my upper legs in the hip area, the groin. I just suddenly felt maybe eight hours in, or maybe eight, nine, eight or nine hours in, I just felt really tired up the um, upper legs. Everything else was fine, and then it just took a few days for for my for my groin area to calm down again. <laughs> that sounds a bit rude, doesn't it? But um, m muscular, I mean. Uh, but other than that, it was all right. And then, the, of course, the following day we had the virtual choir, which was a, a wonderful experience. Um, I think mm. Particularly, I, I dare I say it for me, because it was a. I've played here so many times for you. You've all um, seen me through the camera, but it was actually the first time I was able to turn the camera the other way and um, and and see you guys. So to have everyone come together for the first time um, for me and see and see you and hear you it was really special. And to make yeah. music with people from around the world. That was amazing, wasn't it? Was was The wonders of modern technology. That was amazing. And I think it yeah. meant an awful lot to an awful lot of people, didn't it? Being able to sing in this time of coronavirus where we can't go out and sing in choirs like we normally would. Yeah. Um, it was, And the, the end result was so good. Bravo to everyone who sent in submissions. And really I know good. some of you had to pluck up a bit of courage. I'm thinking of you, Jerry, and others <laughs> had to pluck up a bit of courage to, to submit there. Um, well, I think the, pe now people have seen it. Um, mm, the next one is going to be double, isn't it? <laughs> I think people will. Um, yes. So we'll. I have to pick a piece in a really high key next time. We'll <laughs> even higher. Why? Because people were saying, "Oh, the only thing that stopped me was the high key." Oh, oh I go see. Go for it. Go oh, high. Right. Sing high. Go for it. Well, <laughs> the, the last verse was. Um, you know, I, I wanted the last verse to be high because I had the, the um, the reharmonisation underneath it, and I wanted it to be, yeah. you know, really. And we, we do love the New English hymnal around here. That is both of our favourite hymnal. And that's, you know, G major, that is the key in the New English hymnal. So I'm afraid that's the key that we would go for. Yes, always. indeed, yep. Yeah. And me being a, a high soprano, I just love the high notes. Because I can't sing low very well, so you know, the higher <laughs> the better for me. <laughs> you can't really see this, but it, I'm quite amused that where the, the photograph of Nala is on your screen, the real Nala is sat right there, just underneath me, in front of all my papers, so I can't see what's going on. But you yeah. can't quite see her. She yawned a second ago, and you could just see her whiskers pointing up at the microphone. But she's <laughs> just off camera, but it's funny, because she's sitting where her, her cartoon face is. Well, I, I knew that. That's what, that, well, that, that's why I put Nala on the, on the yeah, screen there. Exactly. So let's go on. Let's have a quick talk about what's coming up. That's we've just yes. spoken about what's been. I'm just looking at over Nala here. Let's just talk about what will mm. be. <laughs> so actually, we have quite a few things coming up. It's going to be a, a very busy mm. and even busier um, few months actually, yeah. um, and coming weeks. So well, we obviously are. We're about to come into Advent, aren't we? Where are we? We're in October now. So, yeah. so yeah, you have the um, October schedule already. Uh, you've seen what's coming up in in October. So we have yeah. this coming Saturday week today. Finally, we'll release the organ demonstration of Rotterdam. It's uh, by far the most used organ on on our channel. And I think it's one of one of the um, better Houtsberg organs that you can currently buy. And I'm really looking forward to exploring every single stop in detail. Look out for that. That'll be next Saturday. Um, the week after that will be the organ recital. My organ recital containing the Healy Willen introduction, Passacaglia and Fugue. And I've started to put on a video or two of me learning that. Um, and I was actually playing it a bit today. I think the, Pas yeah. I think the Passacaglia is almost there, actually. Uh, it's definitely inspired by J.S. Bach, Passacaglia and C minor. Oh, it's fa fantastic. There's so much there that reminds me of that. Piece. It's just in a harder key, E flat minor. <laughs> Um, oh, it's very, that's very, it's with a very lots dark of, key. Lots of it? C flats, A flats, and lots of enharmonic uh, chords, you know, lots of C flat major chords. Mm. C flat major. Oh, there we go. Um, She's off. So that's a bit, um, you know, you, you don't want to be playing that when you're tired or you've had a drink, put it that way. Mm. Um, we have actually have two new organ albums coming onto the channel um, this side of Christmas. Um, that's two. 
that I'm really excited about. Um, so I'll, more on that um, very, very soon. There's one next month and then one in December. Um, we have, hopefully, next month, um, our recital will be... Um, um, will, will consist of people's, your compositions. Yes. Now, so, was, could, could you... Um, give an idea as to the deadline because Steve was asking wh when the deadline was for composition submissions. So I originally said that the, we, we, I would do it in November, right? So I guess the deadline, if it was a November date, would be fairly soon because I need to learn the music. But what I've decided to do, I've had quite a lot of submissions actually, and I've, I've had easily enough uh, for me to, in, to make up a full recital. Nice. Um, but I think what I will do is. I will just, like I did with the virtual choir, I'll actually leave it, leave the door open just for a bit longer so more people can come in. Um, I really want to put together a really fabulous uh, recital. So actually there is no deadline just yet. Um, once I feel comfortable that we've had enough submissions and I think more importantly that I'm able to put together a varied and, um, you know, not all loud, you know, and, uh, last Saturday was all loud in you know, a 12 hour organ marathon but I don't want to give a, a recital which is all loud I want there to be a, a variety so once we've got that um, repertoire which is you know variable then um, then we'll get there so no deadline yet so just watch the space send them in when you're ready <laughs> keep them coming in keep them coming in I've had some I've had some really really wonderful submissions already and um, we had an email earlier from Ollie to say he's written an opera. And would you like to premiere his opera or Beauty and Sound? What? And, and what is more, me sing it? the power That's of the Beauty and Sound community, he's got together with Mitchell, another young organist, mm. who is also a bass, and Mitchell's going to sing the bass role in this opera. Right. Well, How cool is that? That's pretty cool. Um, <laughs> I, don't, I can't promise you anything, guys, with that. Um, I'm, I'm not sure we're going to premiere an opera here on Beauty and Sound. <laughs> Unless it's a, an organ opera, Phantom of the Opera, you know. You could score an organ part in. Okay, so so well, compositions. So call for composers. You know, keep yeah. them coming in. Okay, keep them coming in. Yeah. Um, Advent is just around the corner, so we'll have a, an Advent top ten. Yes. Um, e Bibbs has asked in the chat, are we going to have a virtual church carol service? Well, of course we are, and it will be very special. We've a got virtual some church. Well, you know, the weekly virtual church, is there going to be a carol service? hundred um, percent. Um, carol service, we could produce something special, um, and it's, it, virtual church-wise. We have got a couple of ideas, actually, up our yeah. sleeves to make it a bit elevated to the... I just want to say thank you to Mark. Mark's just left some money in the chat. Thank you very much indeed, it's very kind. And, and to Paul, Tom as well. And Paul, Paul, Tom and Mark. Well. Yeah, thank yeah. you very much. That's very, very kind. Um, so yeah, lots of um, Advent sort of stuff. And then finally, just um, a bit, I suppose, a bit more, a bigger uh, announcement mentioned it before already actually but it's the it's the um future workshop so i have put a call out for young composers young composers young organists um to get in touch with me and it's because i want to um, um facilitate i suppose some organ workshops for you guys i won't be playing and neither will i be taking the workshop actually um, i've already reached out to some really really experienced and talented um, professional organists from here in the UK who are um, willing and able to come and do a workshop. You just need to sort out the logistics. Obviously, it's not very easy at the minute with everything that's going on in the world, so it's a bit tricky. But I suspect mm. it will be next year, so 2021, um, in the first part, early next year, uh, maybe after Christmas, once Christmas has calmed down, um, and maybe the horizon um, of future you know, um, issues is a bit clearer, then we can get some people in and have some workshops. So there will be playing, organ playing workshops, um, improvisation workshops, you know, just the, the normal sort of organ type workshops. Maybe here on this very organ or maybe somewhere else. So look out for that as well. That's just mm -hmm. around the corner. Um, Trevor and Jerry wanted to know what thing in the future are you most excited about? Mm. Well, I think that actually, that sort of thing. So being able to um, have other people on the channel playing um, the organ, that's really exciting for me. I really want to open the doors uh, to other people. I really want to, I really want to give people um, 
um, the opportunity to, you know, we have this wonderful community and we have this wonderful platform on YouTube. So I really want to use it to its absolutely fullest potential. And that will be, in my eyes, actually allowing other people to use it as well. So I think the, mo the thing I'm looking forward to the most is having other people involved. Yep. So other organists, young organists, older organists, professional organists, everyone like that, other people playing here. And also um, going out and recording yeah. and performing on real life cathedral organs here in the UK. So you told me something quite exciting in the week and you may not want to share it because it might still be top secret but Richard did mention something about an organ recital somewhere in the week. Is what? that something you can share yet or not? No, well I'm, I'm going to keep that under wraps just Ah, okay. Well I was now. excited about that but it's top secret at the moment. Keep that under wraps just for now. It involves a real pipe organ. But it's... Um, <laughs> In this, this country. Needless to say, it is a, it's one of the best organs um, in this country. And all being well, I mean, that, that's, that could be any organ. You all have your, <laughs> you'll all have your ideas on which one that could be. Um, but it is considered to be one of the finest. And I will be giving a recital on it. And it will be on the channel. So that's a real life organ out in the real world, out of this room. Which is fantastic. So the, the 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 crucial thing there is for me to make it is to record it to make it sound as uh, um, lifelike and immersive as this one does. <laughs> A lot of people are saying in the chat, "What about the baby?" But we're just talking about beauty and sound here. We're we're, we're talking strictly on a organ professional basis. So don't, don't worry, we haven't forgotten the baby. <laughs> oh yes, we're, that, that, we are excited <laughs> about that. But we're, this is really just you know, beauty and what are we most excited about? Beauty and sound. Yeah. So don't indeed. think that we're bad parents to be at all, please. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we haven't forgotten um, the baby. Mark thinks we should get special guest Olivier Latry to come <laughs> and play. That would be a coup, wouldn't it? Just we'll start we saving could, up for that. I think we can yeah. ask. Um, uh, someone else asked something I was going to put to you um, oh, yeah Zoom carol sing alongs as somebody said that unfortunately because of internet latency delay issues you can't you can't do um, live music on Zoom it just doesn't work they, everyone would be singing out of time yeah. uh, it was Marcel he said a couple of times in the chat can you play some Messia and he said yeah. Transport de Joie now you've recorded that piece it you? is yes it was on the channel actually I, I put it online at Ascension which is obviously the time when it's um, uh, written for uh, so it's it has been recorded. Yes, I have it. It went, and I guess it, I will put it back on the channel next ascension. You <laughs> so may you, have to wait till ascension. So you, wait, wait for um, for Le um at next ascension time next year. But there will be no Messiaen appearing on the channel before that. Actually, Definitely. Yeah. he was one of the the gods of organ so, composition, wasn't he? So. I just wanted to actually just touch on a bit of. Um, I've had a lot of questions around the technology in here. Yes, a lot of people like the tech and chat. This room is absolutely full of technology. This is our dining room, but you wouldn't think it. This is actually our dining room table, but we already have two laptops on here, um, two phones, keyboards, and all sorts of things on it, gadgets, microphones, and a cat. But actually, people are, actually do ask uh, how I stream, how I do it, and it's not easy. It's not easy at all. Now, I'll just quickly whip you through this it, it shouldn't take too long because it, it is quite a dry topic and not everyone's that interested what i will do is i'll give you a, a sort of an end-to-end -end flow on how it and how it goes okay and there'll be a test at the end <laughs> yeah so it starts the sound when we're doing streams obviously there are two things aren't there there's the audio and the video all right so if we just start with the audio first ignore the video the audio comes out of um, out of Hauptwerk or out of the organ. Soon to be named. Well, yeah. Well, it comes out of Hauptwerk on the new workstation, which you all know about, don't you? Um, it comes out of there into another computer uh, via an audio interface. And the reason it goes into another computer is because Hauptwerk as a software program is quite CPU intensive. It uses a lot of resources on the computer and actually streaming is very intensive as well. You've noticed, I'm sure by now, that I have at least three cameras on the go at any one time. I've got um, well, this th for this stream here, I've got the one that I'm talking into now and then I've got two GoPros on the organ. 
So that's three cameras that the computer's having to process. It's quite a lot. So I keep them separate like that. So the audio goes onto another computer, which is doing the stream, and that uploads it, the audio, to the internet. All right. The video, the video, so the cameras all go directly into computer number two uh, through a software, a streaming software called OBS. It's, it's fantastic. It's a, it's free. It's it's called open source, which is it's free to anyone and it's it's developed by a, a community. Um, so it's all done through OBS directly onto YouTube. And if I can help it, I'll, I'll try to do it in 4K. Um, the cameras actually are in 1080p. Uh, they're all streaming in 1080p. But after a lot of trial and error on my part, actually, I upscale from 1080p. So this camera now. This is the, the Panasonic Lumix GH5. I think one of the best uh, video cameras on the market for this sort of thing. Uh, it is streaming in 1080p, that's full HD quality. And the OBS software is upscaling it to 4K. Now I've tried uh, doing native 1080p and streaming in 1080. Um, and I do find that the quality is better for you guys on YouTube in 4K, upscaled, from 1080. But that does mean there's a little bit of a delay. So sometimes in the chat, people have said to me, how on earth can you be chatting? I can see you on screen turning a page. That's because there's a normally around a 10, 15 second delay. 20 seconds. Well, it's so it's 20, 20 seconds. about 20 seconds. So yeah. if you ever think it's all a big fraud and we're not actually live, it, we are live. It's just that you, what you're seeing is, yeah, is 20 seconds different. Yeah. So sometimes, um, like for example, when there have been errors in the past, at like the time we had the microphone muted, you were all frantically telling us in the chat, but unfortunately it was 20 seconds before we realised. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately, that's true. Yeah. So, yeah. But what I, what I do when I'm recording um, pieces or recitals or performances is I actually record it in the in a normal Hampwerk way, just directly into um, a WAV file and then add some post-production to it in Cubase. So add a, add a bit of EQ, a little trick that I have, and I will just tell you this little trick, but I won't tell you all the tricks I have, because that's this is a secret sound. It's like Coca-Cola giving away their recipe. Um, I just actually just widen the stereo field a little bit. Uh, I find the standard Hauptwerk audio to be fairly um, linear, fairly narrow. What I do is just stretch that stereo just so it's wider in the stereo field. So if, you list, if you're listening to it, Standard, it almost sounds like it's just here, right? But what I do is I just pull it that way, so the, st the sound goes further over to the sides. And that's and just, I, can makes I it, makes it a bit more something that a non-tech person has understood? Um, Richard doesn't really like using um, for his recitals organs that are only recorded in stereo. It's pretty crucial for you for that in audio immersion that there are a surround sample sets. Am I right? Yep, because with with surround sample sets, right. uh, with, with, sorry, with stereo, most most organs um, have, until fairly recently, been recorded in stereo. That's just left and right. So two channels, left and right. You can't do a lot with that, apart from, as I say, stretch it so it sounds a bit more full and add some um, um, magic to it as well. With surround, what you can do is the organs are often recorded in either four channels, six channels, or eight channels, and that you can direct different parts of the organ to different channels. So in the room here, we actually have one, two, three, four, um, eight channels. So eight stereo channels, basically, and you can route different organ divisions. So you can route the choir or the great or the solo, the swell to different channels. And then in post-production, what I can do is then pull around the levels a little bit um, with each division. And then they also, these, these organ uh, manufacturers will record the building. They record the acoustic into a separate channel as well. So that's how, we, that's how we're able to uh, make it sound like we're actually in the church itself. Yes, it does sound very odd. Once or twice I've heard Richard play the organ only only privately and um, with all the acoustics switched off, you know, as if the microphones are right next to the pipes. Yeah. It sounds quite extraordinary. The Rotterdam you know is not the Rotterdam that you hear. No, when that it can sound, sound very sound. dry. Yeah, um, very, very but strange. I So I bring the, the building into the mix, basically. that's I think that's enough tech. 
because it can yes. be can be a bit dry, can't it? I think in the chat it's a mixture. Some people are saying you're talking double Dutch. Some exactly, yeah. It. So we'll leave, um, we'll leave the tech there. But there's one more kind of techie question, which a lot of people have asked. Um, how is your Rook Positive going? Ah, the Rook Positive. Well, as you can see, <laughs> it's not there yet. <laughs> um, so... We just, it needs a bit more work, unfortunately. Oh, gosh. Stay so on. These, are the, Watch these, out these are the speakers which are going to go into it. Uh, we've got two of these. Yeah, these are Adam Audios. And I need to... It's not. It hasn't progressed since I did my first video. So don't worry, you haven't missed me cutting the wood and getting <laughs> it wrong and having to go back to the shop to buy more wood. No, it hasn't progressed at all. It's just time, actually. Um, yeah. But I think it may. It will. Don't worry. Oh, uh, hopefully, we'll get it done by Christmas. Oof. That will be a nice present to myself. But yeah. let's not make any promises that I can't keep. So it hasn't progressed much yet. So what it does, I will bring you along with me. The idea is I will bring you on that journey. Right. Final tech question, which isn't oh, yeah. so tech really. Smooth Silk has just asked in the chat, "How do you learn all the tech, Richard? Do you have help? No. Nope. He certainly doesn't get any help from me, nope. Nala. Nope. Let me tell you. No. Nope. <laughs> Don't. People ask me, um, you know, how, how do you do this? You know, tell me how you do X, Y, and Z. And I, I, I just, I've learned by trial and error. You know, if you, um, I think one of the, one of the good things about these, the, the, all those videos having disappeared temporarily, the recitals and the early virtual churches, the early ones that I did from March were pretty hit and miss with with regards to you know live streaming and quality. Um, so it's just actually just you have to start somewhere, right? You know, it's like learning to um, drive or to do something, it's like learning to draw or to to work Photoshop. You know, you just have to start somewhere and then just learn it yourself. Sit down, be very patient. I think that's a, a, a key factor. Be yeah. patient with it and just um, try things out. If, you know, don't don't be afraid to press buttons and just you know you know. Um, Experiment. Don't be, don't be afraid to break things. I think. And that, unfortunately, you do have to make a few mistakes to yeah, learn. So there was that infamous organ recital you may remember, where the, the, the new GH5 was blurry for a whole piece. <laughs> do you remember that, everyone? Richard was not amused. Yeah. Um, well, I think that was one of the, was that the first one that I had with the camera. Yeah, it was. So. And also, there have been a times where we've been live streaming virtual church, and um, and Antino famously said, "You sound like you're underwater." Yeah. Um, so again, so that that's now. Um, I I never got to the bottom of that actually. But I now know to test for that. You know, when we before we go live with these and, and virtual church tomorrow, I will always do a live um, private test. So we'll um, create a, um, yeah. a stream, but make it private, and then just play some notes. You know, just do a, a little bit of a dialogue. Make sure it's in sync. Make sure I'm not underwater, and, <laughs> and all of that sort of stuff. So it is a learning curve. Brilliant. So that, that concludes the tech chat for those of you who aren't techie. Um, we have a, a, Gerda has said in the chat, fully agree, that's how I work too. And I know that Gerda is a professional photographer, so that, that makes me really happy. Yes, some lovely photos. I've seen um, those. So if we work in the same way as Gerda, obviously we are not professional photographers, but um, it's nice to know that we, we Let's she have agrees a... in our philosophy of trying and <laughs> learning. Yeah, you have to, that's the way to do it. Somebody it? says, I think you should go and play the organ now. <laughs> Let's go and play the organ. Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> our second piece this evening is actually going to be, you've heard it on the channel recently. I played it on um, last Saturday for the 12 hour during the English slot. Um, it's one of my favourite pieces, actually. It's my favourite um, piece of English organ music. It's beautiful. It's very simple, um, but it's very effective. It is um, George Thalvin Ball's Elegy. It's very accessible to um, all organists. Um, and I think if it's played properly, oh, a bit of pressure now, it can be one of the most beautiful pieces of English um, organ music, I think, written in the 20th century. So here we'll, here we'll have George Thalbin Ball's Elegy, which was originally improvised and then transcribed by Thalbin Ball himself on the organ of um, Rotterdam.
Now, talking about technology, one of the cameras has just gone black. So what I'll do is Caroline will hold the fort with Nala here. They've actually got Nala on the screen twice. So now let's have a quick look at that. It shouldn't take me a second to sort it out. Um, um, the name of that piece is um, Elegy by George Thalban Ball. The issue with the camera's asking. not even turned on. Oh, it's turned itself off, because it was on for the first piece, I'm pretty certain. Bizarre, isn't it? I'm just going to go back to the organ screen. Ta-da! <laughs> it's on. I think we're back in business. So it would help if the camera was turned on, and it would help if I knew why it wasn't turned on, because it was turned on. Very odd. So. Very odd. So yeah, that was uh, George Talbot Ball's Elegy, and I think that's really beautiful. The last time I played that in a recital away from here was in uh, in Say, down in uh, northern France, in Normandy. It's a beautiful, large cathedral down there, and there's three manual Kivai Col, and it sounded particularly, well, a bit boisterous, actually, when, it, when all the reeds came out mm -hmm. towards the end. It had a very different character, very different it really worked, though. It did. I think actually the the the, bit, the 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 opening against the you know the the main tune on that cello sort of sound actually you know. That's it, a little cello. That's a cello. Well, I couldn't quite get my arm up in time. <laughs> <laughs> a bit of a combination, you know. <laughs> um, yeah, it sounded beautiful. It works well on this organ. I think English English music does work really well on Rotterdam actually. Brilliant. Yeah. So we move on to questions which have come in from the community in, in the past few Great. days. Great. Well, I look forward to these. Um, this, is why we do, this is why we do it. I will try and read the questions around Nala, who is still sitting on my sheet. She is. Um, first one came in from James. Um, can you share some of your experience of your RCO, Royal College of Organist exams, and what did you play? Oh, well, I did my ARCO, um, the associate to the Royal College of Organists. Oh gosh, back in 2000 and it was post-university, um, I didn't do them before university, 2009. I played, um, oh, something from uh, uh, Vienne, the 24 pieces, um, is it Lied? Oh gosh, Lied? I can't remember, um, no it wasn't, it, was even, it wasn't even that, it was Elegy by Vienne, it's something in B flat minor. <laughs> It was rather good. And what else did I play? Don't look at me. Gosh, it's so long ago. Um, oh, wait, um, Bar Chorale. Bar Chorale, which I'll probably find. Um, it was in this book too, Baron Writer. Um, oh, blimey, put me right on the spot there. I don't, I don't know. It was all those years ago. Um, <laughs> it's, it's not even in that one. It's... it's um, then what was it? So I played a bar chorale, which is actually not too hard. I think they were looking for ornamentation, um, articulation, mm -hmm. and just um, a, a you know a style a stylish playing. And what would have been the third piece? Heavens, it was at Mendelssohn. Um, can't remember. Um, but anyway, past that, that was all right. I managed to get a pass on that. Um, the FRCO, I played the last movement of. M uh, Mendelssohn's first organ sonata, so the the recitative, so the penultimate movement, and then the allegro, the uh, very um, pianistic um, arpeggio-based one. It's not easy at all on a you know on a very dry acoustic, in a dry acoustic on a trucker action organ. It's gosh, it's like walking on eggshells. Do they hold all the exams in the same church then? Uh, was there was a in England at least. There's one in London, right, um, and one in. Uh, in Huddersfield, which is where I did mine actually, in St right. Paul's uh, Church in Huddersfield, which is part of the university. Right. Um, very dry. Good organ, actually, but um, it was very dry and there's nowhere to hide at all. <laughs> um, I played for the FRCO, I, was, I then played um, um, Angel, um, Angels, uh, by, Brides Assisted by Angels by Judith it's Bingham. Saint Bride, isn't it? Yeah, I think it is actually St. Bride, St. Bride, Bride, Assisted by Angels. Does anyone know that by Judith Bingham? I, I, I didn't play it since. I haven't played it since. Um, it's rather good actually, rather good. I have heard it played by someone else, and I thought when I heard it when I heard it being played only like two years ago or so, I thought I recognise this. What <laughs> earth is this? But then of course it clicked. It was the, the it was Judith Bingham, and then the the Bach. 
um, which I played was BWV 550, um, the great G major, um, which I haven't played on the channel yet. I haven't played that for a long time, actually. Um, so 550, that was a, which is a oh, difficult piece to play. And you have to do all sorts of difficult things like transposition and yeah, the FRCO is a clefs and stuff. Is don't a, you? Is, um, I don't know whether that's still the same, but um, when I did my mine with keyboard tests, the tr the score reading was soprano clef. So soprano clef is it basically uses the treble clef, but it's a major third higher. So middle C is on the the E line, if you know what I mean. And so soprano clef, an alto clef, tenor clef. And then bass clef, yay! So a clef that I recognise, but um, score reading is hard enough itself. And then score reading all those different clefs was not fun. So it's, if you want to do your FRCO, um, you young keen organists, you better get cracking with your score reading. I don't know whether that's. I think that's changed actually now. Right. It's, it's a bit easier now. You know, back in my so, day. <laughs> yeah. Suzanne has asked: Are choir schools in the UK in trouble in the COVID? -19? Um, era. Financially, or I don't. I think possibly financially, possibly recruitment. I think it's like like Are they at risk of closure. I think. I think like um, any school, really, or any organisation. Yes, they are in trouble. Um, they, they'll they, these schools rely a lot on sponsorships, um, advertising. You know, uh, it's not uncommon for a school to um, when releasing their brochures to have adverts in there from local businesses yeah. and local businesses aren't, um, they're, they're not in positions to um, advertise because they haven't got any money to advertise. No. So I think financially choir schools and their associated cathedrals, yes, massively in trouble. I mean, York Minster um, Choir School has closed, closed earlier in the year. Mm. Um, the choristers now go to St. Peter's School in York, which is actually the original choir school. Um, just a bit of a further walk, um, so they now they're now being looked after by St Peter's School. Um, but I don't, I don't think any I don't think choir schools are immune to the difficulties. No, certainly not. No, it's, it is worrying. And I think even in um, normal times, they they can never be complacent about recruiting new choristers. They have they always have to work really hard to recruit choristers. I think. Nowadays, more so than 20, 30 years ago, I think kids want to do all sorts of different things. They might not just want to sing in the cathedral every day, they might want to do that and they want to do rugby and football. And there are so many other things going on. I think um, recruiting choristers remains a challenge, and you do need a director of music and a, a music team who are really committed. Would you agree with that? Mm. Yes. yes, yes, absolutely. I actually went to a choir school. I went to Provendal, which is Chichester Cathedral Choir School, and I, I follow them on social media, and I think they're doing okay. Um, but hmm. again, they have a very small choir, just, just boy choristers, um, very small choir, but they're, they're back singing, and I think they, they were managing to do quite well during the pandemic. If only you could hear some of the stories that I've heard that from Caroline's time as a, um, a yeah. boarder. Blimey. <laughs> yeah, well, it was a very old school. While I was there in 1997, it celebrated its um, quincentenary, 500 years. So, you know, and right opposite the cathedral, lots of old buildings. They were haunted, you know, it was haunted. It was great. We had a great time. Yeah. yeah. We did. Right, so the um, next question from Rory. Have you composed liturgical or organ music? Uh, um, yes, I have, but I'm not a composer. So I'm not... Um, you know, I'm not particularly proud of them. Uh, so psalm chants, um, I think every church musician mm. has composed psalm He's chants. He's done a lovely psalm chant for um, The Lord is My Shepherd. 23? 23? Uh, well, it's, it's okay. It's, it's all right. Psalm 23. Psalm 23. Yeah. yeah, it's a single it's chant. It's really nice. It's lovely. Um, I've written a few sets of responses. I've never sung your responses. No. Mm. Oh, no, you haven't. No, no you're right, you haven't. Um, a... Um, Magnificat of Nunc so I really like playing song. I like, I like um, you know, Du Riffle Requiem, where he incorporates the plain song throughout the Requiem. The whole piece is based around plain song, and he, he Du Riffle adds wonderful Du Riffle esque harmonies that only Du Riffle could do. Um, I like the idea of incorporating plain song. So my um, Mag and Nunc were on plain song uh, tones. Uh, and I also wrote some responses based on plain song tones, actually, which I've not, I haven't seen those for 
years. I think they've, um, I think they've gone into the special filing cabinet known as the bin. <laughs> um, <laughs> otherwise, organ-wise, I, 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 uh, for my um, AR or FR, I had to write an organ chorale. I think for both, actually. Did I have to write both? So I have that somewhere. Um, I might even play it on the channel and just not announce it and just see what you think it is. <laughs> oh, what's this? Is this Frunk? Is this Bach? What is this garbage? Stop playing it. Um, so I'm not really a composer, actually. Um, I, I tend to leave that to people who who can <laughs> compose. Um, I, do, I, I just love listening. You've written a nice Nunc Dimittis and Magnificat, oh, though. Very yeah. pretty. I've sung both of those. Yeah. Yeah. Nunc, the Nunc's okay. The Nunc's all right. They're just simple, but they work, in oh. my opinion. Yeah. It's less is more. <laughs> uh, Robert asks, um, if you could have a sample set presumably a Hauptwerk sample set, of any UK organ, which one would you like? I don't think this is which ones of the ones that have already been recorded, but which one would you like to see recorded in surround, obviously? Probably, <laughs> um, I think the two I'd like, actually, they're fairly similar organs in some senses. You'll know what I mean when I tell you. Um, similar acoustics, um, but they are the same organ builder, uh, is King's Cambridge and I think Westminster Abbey and those two organs are um, fabulous Harrison organs I think Durham Cathedral is a fabulous Harrison organ but um, for me personally um, the acoustics in King's and in the Abbey just make the organ sing um, more so than Durham. Durham is for those, for those people who don't know, Durham um, has a, I think, the Rolls Royce of Harrison and Harrison organs. Harrison are based in Durham, so they use Durham Cathedral as their poster child, <laughs> uh, <laughs> and it, it, it is terrific. Um, so that would that organ would sound particularly good, um, but personally, Kings uh, and the Abbey. The Abbey. Very exciting Abbey. instrument, the Abbey. It is. Mm. I think that would sound truly marvellous on the outbreak. When um, we sang at Westminster Abbey uh, with Consort SW1, when Rich, Richard was directing, was it two summers ago? Was last year, the normal year it was before last year. COVID. It mm. seems like a long time ago. Um, one of the Abbey's organists was playing for us and he played the Howl's Rhapsody number one. Is it number one? Three. Three, sorry. The, the one with the descending chromatic motifs. He played Howl's Rhapsody number three after Evensong and it was very exciting. Um, oh, it's a wonderful organ. Yeah. It just fills the space so well. Yeah, those two organs, I think. Yeah, mm. fantastic. Um, Nicholas would like to know, um, do you mm. have any strategies or tips for performance nerves? So when he plays, he plays his grand piano in church regularly and he finds himself worrying about wrong notes and, and then the composer's intentions sort of get put to the, the side of it. And he, he wondered if you could share any tips on how you would help try and get past that. Well, let me tell you a, um, a little bit of a... A little bit of a life story uh, here. I, as lo a lot of you will know, I was a full-time cathedral organist, so I spent my career every day playing the organ uh, at various cathedrals, where you know, wherever it was uh, at the time. Most recently, um, Winchester, where I left Winchester in 2012. So actually, it isn't that recently? Actually, it's eight years ago. Crikey. But um, I think one of the reasons why I stepped away from full-time music, full-time cathedral music, as much as I love cathedral music, I love choral music, and I love organ music, and I love liturgy, um, there, there was something about playing. Um, I, I always had such high standards and high expectations of myself and people around me. and. I felt so anxious about my own playing. Uh, you know, when you get when you get to a um, um, a certain sort of stage in your career, whatever that may be, whatever profession that may be, um, if you get to a, a high level and you're working with other uh, well people actually who are better than me, you I, I was very aware of that. I was very aware that I was. Um, there was an expectation on me to perform to a high standard, to a high level all the time. And it got to the stage um, 
with me that I actually felt so anxious every day playing, just playing a normal even song, uh, that I my playing would suffer as a result of my anxiety. So I know exactly what you mean. And I did actually decide that it was too much in the end, so I decided to do other things. But now doing what I do here for you guys and doing uh, what I you know do on, on the channel, on this organ here, um, and actually in other places since leaving Winchester, I've just realized that the only way really to overcome your anxiety, I think that people can um, try, you know, meditation and all of these sort of, you know, relaxation techniques. But I think the bottom line uh, is confidence. Okay, I think everything boils down to confidence. And if you can build up your confidence, you are then confident that you can do something well. If you go into something um, unsure, or if you go into something doubting that you can do a good job, you will be nervous because the whole the reason we get nervous is because we doubt ourselves and we think something might go wrong. Mm. Um, and if you can get to the stage where you can perform, there's always going to be something that, go, that might go wrong. You can never... That's the joy of live music though, isn't it? That's why yeah. people like live music. But it, yes, so you can never mitigate every uh, scenario. You can't mitigate all risks, you know. Um, and as a project manager, I know that there are certain risks that you carry forwards. You know, you, you just have to mitigate them. So mitigating your um, anxiety risk is um, resolved, I suppose, by becoming confident. And how do you, so then you ask yourself, how do you become confident? Preparation, I guess, good preparation. So you have to, you have to break it down, like this is how my mind works, you break things down. You, it, what, what's the ultimate gain, uh, gain, um, goal? The goal is not to be nervous. Okay, that's, that, that's the strategy, that's the vision. Step down, okay, so how do we not get nervous? Personally, for me, I think most people it's confidence. Okay, so how do, how do you then become confident in your playing? This is the that's that's the nugget of the question, and it's different for a lot of people. Um, for me, it's it wasn't always about being over prepared. Unfortunately, um, I could play something um, almost from memory, uh, you know, and I, I would be so confident that I, that I could play it. But sometimes nerves would get in the way, and I wouldn't play it. I think the problem was that I'd had some experiences where things hadn't quite gone right and that had knocked my confidence. But you need to get the confidence built back up. And I think the, one of the crucial ways of getting your confidence back up is simply, I think, two things. So performing, so doing it, actually being in that horrendous position of being live and doing it in front of an audience, but doing it... Um, having prepared so going go, going into that performance with the uh, expectation and sort of understanding that you um, are prepared you are ready and you know you know you know everything in the right order you know what music's coming next everything's around you everything is just there and you just do it is it yes yeah, so I think I think you need to um, you need to who has the question sorry um, Nicholas Nicholas you need to find what makes you um, confident in your playing you need to find that there is a book actually it's, it it's in, um, was written by a British chap called Professor Steve Peters it's called the chimp paradox now there are, uh, there are loads of different ways of looking at nerves but this this book Professor Peters was the team GB cycling um, psychological coach I think for what for a better word and he it's called the chimp paradox and that it, it all different psychologists will have different different um, descriptions of this, but everyone has their chimp, which is this voice in their head saying, I can't do it, I'm going to play a wrong note, I'm nervous. Whereas actually, your rational brain should be saying, no, I can do it, I'm prepared, I've practised, I love playing the organ, I take pride in what I do, I love my job. Um, and it, all this book is about shutting out the chimp and focusing on the rational brain. And of course, the rational brain can't function unless you've, you've practiced and prepared, which of course you have. It's all about how to lock out the chimp. So it's called The Chimp Paradox, and it's by Professor Steve Peters. Yeah. And it's well worth a read, because it, it, although he comes from cycling and Olympic cycling, um, it actually it, it, it could feed into any walk of life, music, any competitive sport. 
Um, so maybe give it a read because I've yeah. read it. It's really good. Yeah, I think also there's a, a, a quick fix as well uh, is to record yourself playing. Uh, I think uh, the more you do that, the more you are, you know, you might play a, um, a mistake and you play a wrong notes or do something um, playing it live and you think, oh my gosh, that's just the end of the world now. I might as well stop playing and go home because everyone's going to be shaking their heads and tutting. Well, and that's your chimp, you see. Exactly. You need to lock that chimp away. But then you can lock the chimp away by if you record yourself, you listen back and actually that mis- that wrong note, that wrong, the single wrong note, chances are people haven't heard it. Mm. Yeah. You know, I think recording yourself does a lot of you, a lot of good. I mean, it's, it's hor- the first time you start doing it and the first time you start listening to yourself, it's horrendous. You know, it's like it almost makes you never want to play ever again. Mm. But then the more you do it, the more you realise, oh, that. so I need to do more phrasing there. You'll often find that, um, but for me, it was, it was tempo. Uh, my tempo, when listening back to something, was so much uh, faster than I had realised. You know, when I was playing it live, I thought this was a fairly steady tempo. Listening back, far too fast. Mm. So I think don't be afraid just to yeah. slow things down a little bit. So, yeah. Jerry's also said in the chat, probably quite helpful, um, just practice the actual live event, play just for one or two family exactly. members, friends, yeah. supportive people. Um, don't stop. <laughs> don't, don't let you practice the event. That's a really good tip, I think. Yeah. I think being being in that event, being in that scenario helps. Yeah. Just doing it. Great, that was really good. Thank you. Good question, um, Nick. Paul, um, <laughs> Paul wants to know: Have we discussed with Nana and Bobby the new arrival? <laughs> we haven't, in as many words. Although I, you know, I think cats know, don't they? They, they, they've got amazing sense of smell, much stronger sense <clears> of smell than we have. They can probably smell from me that something's going on. I, I would have thought. Um, so I think they probably already know. Although we might have mentioned it in throwaway comments, but would you agree they, they probably know? Cats are all knowing, know, aren't they? With you. I don't know. They're all knowing. Uh, yeah, I think they'll be fine with it. Yeah. It'll take them. I think they, it will take them a while to come around to the idea of more noise in the house. I mean, Bobby is behind the camera now, asleep on the sofa. Yeah, um, Bobby's here. She's just behind the camera. She's behind the camera, keeping an eye on things. Um, I think the noise that um, the new baby will make might take them a little bit of time to get used to. But then I think after a while they'll be best of friends. I think. I hope so. Okay. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> Um, we had chatted about this before in another question and answer in previous months, but Dennis and Jeffrey just wanted to know what our jobs were. So while we're talking about cats, I'm a vet, veterinary surgeon, and Richard is a project manager in London. Project manager in London, yeah, that's very boring. I mean, Caroline's job is far, far more interesting than my job. Um, but so it, my job takes me away from home. Um, I have to go up, up to London, um, which is door-to-door. It, what does it take me, an hour and 45 minutes, door-to-door? That's not too bad, though, is it? Uh, but times two a day, you know, it it it, it adds up, and it means I, it takes it takes me away from here, unfortunately, which make, which makes me really sad, really sad. I'd rather be here all the time. But yeah. um, Chris has got three questions. One is how do we exercise? <laughs> <laughs> Go on, you first. Okay. Uh, well, I on here, obviously, <laughs> uh, fingers and feet on here, and mentally, and uh, walking around London as well. Um, so I don't need to get the tube or anything. I just can, I can luckily walk um, from the train station. So probably do I'm doing my ten thousand steps a day by walking around. And when I'm not in London, I I've got a treadmill upstairs. So I try and try to get on that. Yeah. And then I yeah. do a, a once a week uh, exercise class, a circuits class, and it just locally um, we're doing we're doing it outside at the moment, which is really nice actually. Although it's getting a bit dark in the evenings, but once a week I do that, and then I also do a bit of yoga. Yes, YouTube, that, yoga, YouTube yoga, right? Yoga. So walking in, walking into the bedroom when she's doing the yoga, to see her in in positions that you never expect anyone to be in, you know. And sometimes Arms when I'm and... doing yoga, Nala, um, she kind of wanders underneath me and gets right in the way. So I've had to shut the door now, so she can't get involved. Legs and arms and in, in, in pointing in directions I never thought were possible. <laughs> Not for me. Not for me. Excellent. Any um, more questions? Yeah, yeah, there are a couple more. Chris again he's got three questions actually oh sorry um, yes when you can travel when we can all travel again yeah. and you go to play the famous Wanamaker organ in the USA what's oh, going to yes. be your repertoire oh I don't know <laughs> minuet in G oh come on <laughs> gosh well what um, I don't know actually that's that's a question isn't it I don't, I don't I like know what's te- uh, something epic like that Vienne you know that Vienne well, that you play the th- I don't know what sounds good 
in there. That one I don't from know, the, people, yeah, exactly. People will know, actually. Um, people will... I've never heard it live. Um, I, I've heard it's on the internet. And... I, gosh, I mean, it, it has everything on it, doesn't it? I mean, I'm, I'm learning this Healy Willen um, introduction Pascalia and Fugue, which requires a lot of colours. He was very, mm. in the score, very specific about um, what stops and what colours to get. That would work rather well. Um, do you know what? I think actually, just like, because it's so big and just so famous and loud, just something like the V door. Yeah, obviously. You just, 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 um, just, just smash out the, v, the Takata by V door on full organ, of course. <laughs> I think people will want to hear that. The shoppers would like. Of course, they really would. want to hear that. Um, Chris's last question: What is the naughtiest hymn that you've been introduced to by the Beauty and Sound community? Oh gosh, I, I can't even remember what the hymns were though. What? Naughty hymn. Naughty hymns. Well, there's that one that you hadn't come across with Beethoven 9, paraphrase, Joyful, Joyful, We Adore Thee. You thought that was quite naughty at the time, didn't yeah, you? Yeah, there's that one. There's also um, <laughs> uh, that one which... Uh, cr- uh, crown him. Is it... Uh, and the refrain is crown him, crown him, crown him. Is it crown Oh, him? yeah. That's Roger's favourite. Diadem. Diadem. That's the one. Yeah. That, that one... That's naughty. That one feels a bit naughty, that one. But particularly <laughs> the refrain. I can, I can just imagine, just imagine the bases really sort of getting into that crown him crown him just looking at each other and giving each other a little knowing smile as I, as I know some of you will <laughs> Ship Spells has said good. sorry if interrupt Ship Spells has said you must use the bells on the one and organ. organ oh, yes. and Paul says make sure one of your pieces focuses on the strings yes well I, strings yes, I, I gather it does have a very good st- so maybe something with a good crescendo like the um, Nimrod variation mm. um, Elgar from the Enigma Variations um, that would sound good. Those strings with the epic crescendo. Yeah. Well, we we'll have to get. We we'll have to go over. Yeah. And then when, when we go over, well, I'll announce it on the channel. Mm. You all have to join me in Philadelphia. Please do some shopping, <laughs> and um, and we'll have a an organ recital there. That would be fantastic, wouldn't it? Absolutely. Uh, the next question is actually for me from Jeff. Uh, where did I get my music education? Well, I, as you know, I went to a choir school. I wasn't a chorister because I'm not a boy, but I, I did get a fantastic music education at Prebendal. I was actually a boarder because my father was in the Navy, so I was bo- I boarded for it throughout. So it was a shame I couldn't go and sing even song, actually. But there we are. I, we, music was part of life at the school. The fact that the orchestras were fantastic for children of that age, the, the choir, it was just singing was something we always did and and when we got to grade five on our instrument we were given the opportunity to to play our our pieces in Chichester Cathedral before assembly so you'd have bearing in mind you'd have 200 in the school all the staff a few parents at the back so it was big space lots of people you know at least 250 people to play to Mm. so I was probably about 10 and I was playing my Bach um, flute sonata in E flat major first movement, which is one of my grade five pieces, and I was I was you know I'd reached the level that I was allowed to play before assembly, and I remember being absolutely terrified, um, but I started really young, so I think that helps. I think that helps with nerves actually. If you start doing something that young, I think it becomes second nature. So I mean, being a boarder, it was music practice on one instrument before breakfast, music practice on another after supper before bedtime. We were always messing about, you know, we'd always jump into each other's practice rooms and do like, um, you know, improvisations or we'd never, you know, we'd never sit there by ourselves practicing scales. We'd always be leaping about. Like I had a friend who played the bassoon, so we used to do flute and bassoon, um, you know, flute and bassoon stuff, which was quite fun. Much more interested in practicing by yourself. Um, and then secondary school I continued to, they, they were really good particularly chorally actually at my secondary school and one of the teachers was um, had a lot of links with the BBC so we did um, quite a few um, live broadcasts on the BBC which was a great experience and then I went to Bristol University to study veterinary medicine and for the five years that I was there I was really involved in choirs orchestras um, yeah but I didn't probably I mean you know me as a singer now but I didn't have singing lessons until I was much older probably at least 15, 16, probably before I started singing lessons. Singing was just something I always did, but actually my first instrument for many years was the flute, and I always played the piano as well. Um, So I started young. I was really lucky. I went to some great schools, and I've just carried it on. Yep, indeed. But I don't play the flute much now, actually, because I found the amateur... She is actually a really good organist, (laughs) which we'll have to get here on the channel. Yes, indeed. um, And play the organ. And I'll I'll monitor the hymn requests, and Caroline can play them. 
That's not true. Well, let, we'll do a swap. I was not Maybe particularly it. gifted at the piano. I was okay, but I wasn't. I, I can't, couldn't really sight Beauty read. Beauty and sound does Les Dawson for a day. I can sight read when there's one stave, when there's a singing or flute. I was a brilliant sight reader, but for some reason, I couldn't really sight read particularly well when there were when there was two clefs. Don't know why. Never. The really. sight reading I find particularly easy actually. Well, I find it quite easy I've to sing, it. but not on the it. piano. So that, and actually at school, at Prebendal, um, the assistant organist then, Mark Wardell, said, do you want an organ lesson? And I thought, yeah, you must be joking. I'm struggling enough with two staves, let alone three. So I said no, but I probably should have done, because that would have been really cool. Yeah, yeah. Anyway, that's I, 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 I was sad not to have been to a cathedral choir school, actually. I didn't. I didn't. But maybe more about that another time. Yeah. Um, right, shall I go and play some more? organ music yeah um daniel asks how old are the cats nala's five bobby's two yes babies um keith wants to know how many cathedrals you've played in in this country i don't know <laughs> i think all of them um ne not quite but nearly all of them have you played the organ of westminster cathedral yes you love it don't you both there's a there's an organ there's a wonderful organ on the west end wall um which is it's very loud from the console the um the great mixture is right above right above the organist's head and it's 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 very exciting but they also have a wonderful choir organ you know the um cathedral had um you used to be able to play the main organ from the apse that's from the east end for some reason they took that console away it was just sacrilege so they now have a uh, two manual organ in the east end um, which accompanies the choir uh, perfect for playing song and that, that sort of thing. Yeah. Nice. Um, Dupre was the org the um, was the advisor actually for Westminster Cathedral. Um, he advised on that organ. Well, that's why it's so good. Mm. Um, have you ever played? Sorry, I didn't catch the name of the person who asked this in the chat. I don't think. Have you played the organs in Northern Ireland at the Ulster Hall and Belfast Cathedral? No. No, I didn't think you had. No, I I've only the only place in Ireland I have played is um in dublin christ church cathedral dublin oh, yeah. um there's a, a couple of other p churches around christ church sorry around Two dublin, dublin yeah, what's the there? other one is it st patrick's i think so i can't remember but john my friend john was organ scholar at christ church yeah uh, no yes that one mm. yeah yeah i played there i played three places on that on that, on that trip i can't remember where the other two were <laughs> I remember there being a really big acoustic in one of them, but yeah. Um, Tom is asking, how many village churches in the UK have organs? <laughs> <laughs> uh, 175. Well, I think what he's meaning is, you know, I don't do know. they all have working, fabulous working pipe organs? Or, uh, you know, you've played enough village churches for weddings and stuff. It's, gosh. It was, it's pretty variable, isn't it? It's, um, yeah, it's variable, isn't it? Most, I think most, most churches have an organ. I think that's fair to say most churches have an organ of some sort. Whether the organ's working or not, that mm. depends on the um, finances of the local parish, to whether they can afford to maintain it. I think a lot of a lot of organs have fallen into disrepair, but the problem is when they fall into disrepair, it's very very hard to get back, isn't it? You want to keep on top of it. Um, but yeah, gosh, I have played so many village church organs more than cathedral organs, and you do come across some very interesting instruments. Very interesting instruments. <laughs> you never know what you're going to get when you go to a village. You walk in the church, and then you have to find the key where it's normally hidden under the bench <laughs> or in someone's organ shoe, at the <laughs> resident organist's organ shoe. Um, but yeah, that's, that's a really variable uh, sort of answer. There's lots, Excellent. lots. <laughs> Um, I think that's it. But Mark has commented that in the thumbnail you said you were going to put on a cowboy hat. <laughs> if you're I'd, lucky, I didn't know about it. <laughs> if you're it. lucky, well, um, it was just um. It and was he's all... asking, where is it? So where, you're going to have to play your next piece in it, I think. Oh no! Have, you, have find... you hidden it? I don't know. I'll go and have a look for it. Um, it's around somewhere. No, it's here. Oh, you found it. Well, if you're lucky, depends how the next piece goes. If I play, if I play the next piece well, um, then I'll put it on. Stetson. <laughs> oh dear so uh, and, uh, speaking of which I will go and play the organ now I will go and play um, J.S. Bach's Prelude and Fugue in A minor BWV 5 
three. Um, it's a wonderful fugue. Um, try and try and hear where the strong beat of the fugue subject falls. For a long time before I learnt it, I thought the strong beat fell a semiquaver later than it actually does. <laughs> see if you can see what I mean. So I'll, I'll just make my way over um, and play the wonderful prelude and fugue in A minor, BWV543 by the great man JSB.
Well, sorry about the pedal camera. I'm not quite sure um, why the pedal camera went off. It's actually, uh, it did say something about a battery, didn't it? It did. But it's actually plugged into the main, so I don't know. I, I need to, um, these things, you know, we're talking earlier about uh, technology type things. You know, these things will just happen. You know, at least it wasn't the main manual. <laughs> and at least it wasn't a recital. So it's, the good thing is these are a bit more informal and um, there's, it doesn't really matter, doesn't it? You saw, you know, it was actually Caroline who was playing the pedal part there. <laughs> Unfortunately, you missed that. Oh, you'll never see that ever again. She'll never do it again. Morris couldn't believe that you thought I was Les Dawson. He thought that was really un, um, disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Thank you very much for uh -oh. the um, for the 50... Oh, yes, thank you very much. Knock. Thank you very much. That's very kind. Thank you very much. Appreciate that. I just wanted to say before we finish what what a wonderful community we are building here. I mean, I think that the, the 12 hour organ recital, the last hour, I was in hysterics reading what Morris and Trevor, who I think now call themselves Uncle Morris and Uncle Trevor, were getting up to with their jokes about somebody nicking the general cancel button and running away with it so you wouldn't ever stop playing. And then there was a lot of chat. They wanted us to actually press general cancel because they were terrified we were going to go over the 12 hours and the whole stream would be yeah, lost. Yeah, well, it's, it's, it's absolutely true that if you go over 12 hours, it does funny things happen to the video and it will just disappear so i was so keen to just finish it before 12. i wasn't trying to cop out and you know um play for five minutes um you know shorter than what i said i would i didn't want you to feel shortchanged. i'm sorry if you did um but it was it's absolutely true so next time we do one this time next time we do a 24 hour one oh, really? <laughs> can you not just play to... all the bark prelude and fugues instead no i don't play oh. them all yeah, well that's the point can't you do that instead? Because I like to go to sleep. You, well, you can go to sleep. I'll, I'll just play along. I'll put my headphones on. You're mad. Uh, sleep, sleep is for the weak. No, I think you're mad, don't you know? We'll have to do it in two halves, basically. So, yeah, here's the here's cowboy hat. D there somebody asked where your machete was, Jay. Where's your machete? Very good question. And someone thought they could hear some purring, which probably is true because she's very close to the microphone and she probably is purring. Yeah, she is, yeah. She's very happy. Softly. Well, thank you all very much indeed for joining us this mm -hmm. evening. Thank you. Um, what would like to do? I'd like would like, we would like to do these maybe once a month or once every two months, um, and we'll try and get a, a format going. So, well, let us know if you get bored, and then we'll stop doing them. Well, actually, what would be really useful, actually, moving forwards uh, onto the next one, would be uh, feedback. You know, would you would you like me to wear the cowboy hat for the entire stream? <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, since in all seriousness, what would you like? What what works? What sort of format do you think works? So we can really develop this uh, next mm. time we do one of these, possibly this year. I don't know with us going into Christmas, it's going to get really busy. Yes. Um, but next next time, fingers crossed, we do one. We'll, we'll do have one in January to get we'll over have, the January. Blues. We'll have somebody join us. You know, we'll have a, a guest speaker. Um, it's just a bit difficult at the minute, as I say, people can't really go into other people's houses. That's really sad, isn't it? But it is true um, to, to some extent. So, um, yeah, so feedback, please, on these on these, um, on these these sorts of videos. I think we should go get something to eat, yeah. feed the cats, and um, I'll take off the cowboy hat. Maybe I'll wear it tomorrow for virtual church. Virtual, virtual cowboys. <laughs> cowboys in churches. <laughs> oh, the steak was excellent, Steve. Yeah, thank you to Richard's dad, Tony, who was with us for the whole 12 hour stream. And um, he washed the cars while we were going, all of our cars, which was very kind. He oh, also went many. and collected our click and collect shopping for us, which was very kind. And he cooked steak after we'd finished, which was absolutely incredible. <laughs> and, um, and he even brought a glass of bubbly. I had to have a non alcoholic alternative, obviously, but Richard had a glass of bubbly handed to him at the console as we finished the trial. <laughs> so that was a lovely touch. So thank you, Tony, for I all I see the question from Richard, actually. R um, Richard Setting, who asks, do, I, do our neighbors like music? <laughs> well, I'm sure they do like music, but luckily uh, we live in, this is a detached house. Um, oh, so okay. we, we don't have neighbors attached to the house. Neighbours are sort of over the bottom of the mm. garden on both sides. So actually, and we did do various sound tests early on when, it, when I first got the organ yep. to see how loud it was outside. Uh, with the windows closed, you can't hear it actually. It's decent. I think with the, both patio doors open, our next door neighbours would get a bit of a blast if he was playing something particularly loud. But um, yeah. we haven't over had the, any over complaints the summer. yet. Not yet. No, over the yet. summer when it was really hot, I had to have the windows open. Yeah. Um, and I did wonder whether the, the neighbours got a bit sick of hearing the V-door and, you know, all of this sort of stuff. 
Um, I think it's when you were learning Messiah. Uh, you know the same passages again. Yes. Again. <laughs> well, that was um, when it, when his ascension was June, or was it yeah, May? Uh, I can't remember when it was this year, um, but it was quite hot. I, rem- mm. I do remember it being really hot and having to practice it with the windows open, and I was very aware that mm. the neighbours um, hearing the same bits over and over again. And they're retired, the neighbours, so they're home all day to hear it as well. But luckily, they they sit sort of the opposite side of the house. Um, we both have south facing little terraces, so actually they're not immediately near the organ they're sort of the far side of their house you've got the whole of their house to sort of yeah. sound board if you like so sound board indeed yeah oh. right well i think we'll say good night yes we will um we'll, and we'll see you tomorrow for virtual church um the usual time five o'clock uk time check your local time zone uh, get your request sent in to the usual email address um, i'll put on a placeholder straight after this and uh, let's make it a good one it's a highlight of the week. Excellent. So yeah, shall we say good night? We shall. I think we should well, say good night. Should say cheerio. And it was well, well, that's fine. That that is a, once I said that, there's no going back. <laughs> so okay, well let's Nala say. Nala says goodbye. Well, let's say cheerio then. Cheerio from Nala. Oh, she's cross now. She doesn't want to be moved. She's a funny girl, isn't she? She goes, she goes up and down. She's funny. She she'll often growl. Well, she often won't growl, but. She sometimes just will growl for no reason. Well, are you going to come say goodbye to your fans? No, sorry. She's, she's got her, she's got her back to us now. <laughs> right, well, until tomorrow, um, virtual church tomorrow, get, get your request sent in. I look forward to seeing your naughty hymns. You know, there was a question around that earlier. Um, I try and out naughty the naughtiest one you've given me so far. Um, I will see you tomorrow at our usual time. So until then... I will say cheerio. 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 Goodbye, everyone. Thank you very much for joining us. And please remember to give us some feedback. Bye-bye. Bye.